and it's also Remembrance Day, so it's 11.11, and um, I've set an alarm on my clock for 11.11 a.m., so I will also remember to pause at that time, take a breath, and be grateful, and remember all of those that um, fought for our freedom. So it's been a very interesting week around the world, I have to say, and something that um, is exciting, but also fairly frightening in equal measure and I've been, um, it's hard not to be reflective or nostalgic um, on Remembrance Day and I had a post, you know, a Facebook memory this morning of two years ago of my kids and I here in Townsville, we'd just been living here for two months at that point and I was a very different looking woman two years ago than I am today. So um, yeah, that's an interesting time to be reflective on Remembrance Day for those that we've lost, but also for where we are in our life. But the great thing is I also see a lot of positive things happening in the world and I feel optimistic that we're turning a corner politically, environmentally, and also in our own health and our own well-being um, individually, but also collectively. So that's really beautiful because what I've noticed a lot in the last month particularly, a lot of my friends in different parts of the world um, have been embracing the changes that have been forced upon them this year. And they've launched creative businesses, they take, they've taken up physical activity, they've been writing books, and they've not just been sitting around waiting for COVID to be over, to go back to life as normal. So that's been quite inspirational to see people doing new things, taking on new challenges and launching new products and producing, you know, beautiful work that they can share with people. So I've really also been inspired by that. You know, because what I realize is that every person is a micro influencer in that they have an influence over a small group of people, whether it's their loved ones, their family, their friends or their community. And that positivity creates um, a ripple effect which starts to be noticed um, in their immediate circle, um, but then broader. And the great thing about social media is that you can actually share the ripple effect quite quickly. But, you know, possibly some of those people will go on to create a great big wave of change around them. And that's also amazing and inspiring as well. So I was just cleaning my glasses before I came online. And it's two years since I started wearing glasses. Um, and this week I've had to go and get my eyes retested and rechecked. So um, on the inside, when they do those photos and they're, they're, my eyes are healthy, but I've started to notice over the last few weeks a bit of tension around the tops of my eyes um, and this was my first pair of glasses. I've recently lost my second pair of glasses so if you see them please tell me. They were my nice round ones with purple on the inside and tortoiseshell on the outside there somewhere. Um, but the test did show I needed a slightly higher prescription and I've been starting to feel that the last few weeks. So just listening to my body and my eyes telling me, okay, Chrissy, come on, it's time to get this sorted out now. I don't want to have this, you know, pain in my head for much longer. So hopefully my glasses will come from Melbourne very soon and very quickly because I need them. Um, it's been an amazing week so far and it's only Wednesday. Um, this week I've heard back from the printers in Brisbane that will start dispatching my koala books this week. So that's super awesome and exciting. Books will be left in Brisbane to go to the Australian Koala Foundation. They have a shop in the centre of Brisbane so they'll be taking some stock and then I'll start dispatching those books throughout uh, North Queensland in the next two weeks. I have some book reading events coming up as well as some book signing events um, and I'm excited to get our koala book out and about. Also this Friday we're going to prepare it for its um, global distribution so we'll put it on a platform which means it can be bought um, all over the world so that's super awesome exciting I'm really happy. A number of speaking opportunities have presented themselves both for the remainder of 2020 and in early 2021. So it's been cool to start some planning for that and to think about how we can make those events um, exciting for men as well as women um, and to spread the word around our regional areas. 
And I've also had an uplift in international sales of my um, Broken to Unbreakable book, both in paper book and audio book in the last month. So that's really cool when you start to see that the book is being purchased by people out in the big wide world. And I might never meet them, but I'm um, hoping that they'll get something from the book and share it with others. So that's really amazing. And this week um, I formed a partnership with a company in the UK called Mind Kind Kids. Mind Kind Kids have just launched a brand new product for Christmas, for, which is a mindfulness-based Christmas activity for children. And it's similar to an advent calendar, but it's mindfulness-based activities for the duration of the first to um, 25th of December. So it's a super awesome product. Um, there's printed copies available in the UK, but in Australia I'll be doing digital downloads of that product. And later this evening I'll be launching that product on my Facebook pages and on my website so you'll be able to go and and buy it and start sharing it either with your children or with your schools or with your local communities and really get children involved in mindfulness based activities for 2020 because one of the activities you know talks about the letter from San Santa to say that you know yes he's aware of what's happened in COVID this year and haven't children been brave and resilient and kind and thoughtful and how can we um, um, you know, reinforce those messages. So in the run up to Christmas, it's not all about what presents am I going to get, which is quite funny because even my two year old is asking me about, mummy, when can I put up our Christmas tree? Mummy, is Father Christmas gonna come and bring me presents? Mummy, we don't have a chimney. How is Father Christmas gonna come into the house? So I've been answering a lot of those questions uh, in the last week. And the reality was that I wasn't actually prepared to start thinking about Christmas yet because there's a lot happening before Christmas. So. Um, I need to put on my Christmas frame of mind and I'm delighted that mine kind kids have asked me to partner with them here in Australia so we can share those mindfulness based Christmas messages with children and with families, um, particularly this year. So that's super exciting. I'm grateful to Holly and Emily for inviting me to be a part of that project. So um, I wanted to share something with you in the spirit of honesty because I believe that um, being honest is the best way to help people and I also believe that when we share our frustrations, our feelings, our thoughts and our, our challenges we can overcome them much more readily. So in the spirit of honesty today I wanted to share with you that you know so many great things are happening and I should be bouncing off the walls. But as a mother of two young children, the reality is quite different. <laughs> and for example, yesterday I had an amazing day planned to connect with some women I hope to collaborate with in 2021. And my two-year-old decided that she would wake up at 4 a.m. and not go back to sleep, whether through, you know, um, asking her nicely, um, cajoling her, encouraging her, sleep just wouldn't come. So. From 4 a.m. yesterday, I had my toddler with me and, you know, needless to say, I drank far too much coffee yesterday because I was exhausted. And by the time witching hour rolled around, I still had a long night ahead of me because I had a meeting at the school, which ran later than normal. And then I had a client who wanted to quote ASAP yesterday. And so I was working until 10, 8, 10 p.m. last night. So my day had started at 4 and finished at 10 p.m. So I was feeling a little bit exhausted to be honest and this morning I wanted to um, be energetic and excited because I have another great day planned however in the car park at school my elder daughter fell over and cut her knee and tore skin off her hand and it was very painful and obviously um, she was very 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 upset and crying her eyes out and she didn't want me to wash it, she didn't want me to leave, you know, so it became like an emotional um, challenge to help calm her down, to help clean up the cuts and to help get her ready to go and join her class. So after 30 minutes of all of that and trying to say goodbye, I finally got into my car to come home to start my day's work and all of my energy <laughs> drained from my body and I started to feel a bit blah, you know, and I was looking out at the river as I was driving home thinking just get me down there I, I don't want to be um, you know I want to just be out in nature not really having to go home and deal with the mess that's in the kitchen so um, I wanted to share that and so I say to myself okay I feel a bit crap I know I'm tired I have eye strain a bit of headache the kitchen is a mess but what is one positive thing I can do right now 
And I asked myself that, what is the one positive thing that you can do right now? Well, the first thing I thought of is, well, I can get myself a healthy breakfast. So I made myself a coffee and a healthy breakfast, and I told myself I'm going to enjoy this healthy um, breakfast. Secondly, I can congratulate myself on doing the best job that I can with my girls and know that I supported them this morning as best as I could. Thirdly, I think of something positive that happened yesterday and will happen this week. And then I can feel those emotions start to come on because when you think sad things, you feel sad things. If I think positive things or I think happy things or I think good things that have happened, I also then feel the endorphins and the um, oxytocin from the good stuff that's happened. So at that moment, rather than going into a rabbit hole of woe is me, I want to try and use my happy hormones and good thoughts to boost me up. So I want to think of something positive that has happened. And then I can um, be grateful for something that's happened today or grateful for something that's happened in the past. So thinking, okay, well, I'm really grateful that I've got an opportunity to partner with Mindkind Kids. It's a little bit of extra work, but it's, I'm grateful for the opportunity. So that's you know something I can be grateful for. And then I'll say, say to myself, right now I can prepare for my live and know that this feeling of tiredness, frustration and guilt, because I have guilt, will pass and I can enjoy the day and not regret what I haven't done. So those are a few positive things in order to get myself out of the feeling of rut, tiredness, frustration, fed up emotional drain that I have um, felt this morning and I'm being honest with myself when I say I'm feeling those things what can I do next so those are the simple things that I did I made a positive step to influence what I fuel my body with a positive um, influence into what I'm thinking about um, kick in those horm happy hormones and to be grateful for something that has happened and something that will happen um, and then I'm already starting to feel the effects of those things just in the last hour since I got home and started to reset my day. So you can do this too yourself. So you can say to yourself, what is the one positive thing that I can do right now when I'm feeling frustrated, worried, exhausted, fed up or confused? So you can say, I have a healthy breakfast, go for a walk, have a glass of water. Remind myself of some things to feel grateful for. Think of something good that's already happened to you or even to someone else. Now think of something good to look forward to. And you could pay a bill, even if it's just a small one, because paying a bill is a way of doing good for somebody because they have already provided you with a service. So even if it's just a small bill, paying a bill will help. Um, tidying your room. So sometimes it's nice just to tidy a little bit because then you don't feel overwhelmed by the mess around you. And you can tell someone you love them, either by messages or by phone call or um, as you pass them. And then you know that this feeling shall pass. And one small positive step is a step in the right direction. So all I did was say to myself, I'm going to have a coffee and a healthy breakfast and then everything after that is a bonus. So it's really helped me to get myself out of those feelings of exhaustion, frustration and emotional overwhelm that I was feeling. So I just want to say thanks for watching today. You know, keep an eye out later for the launch of the Mind Kind Kids Christmas Challenge. It's super awesome and so beautiful, and I'm sure that you will love it. Remember what is the one positive step that you can take to help lift the challenge you're facing and remind yourself of something good that's happened. Um, and if you like my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Chrissy Regan, The Wellness Poet, so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. So, for example, all of my lives are on my YouTube channel. There's dozens and dozens and dozens, probably now hundreds of videos there with loads of useful mindfulness-based content as well as other interesting inf health and well-being information. And I just want to wish you well. Have a great rest of the week and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.